Welcome to Star Citizen and the XXL Power Management Guide. In this guide, you will learn everything about the new capacitor gameplay, which finds its way into the game with version 3.14 as power management. I was always inclined to make history, but I never really had the time. Spent my life living dangerously, never worried how I'm getting by. Here we go into all the settings and possibilities with which you can draw a maximum bonus from the power management. And of course, we compare all the different settings with each other and make an analysis. To begin with, let's take a look at the new head-up display layout and the different areas. Here we notice that in the middle of the upper area we find three displays for our different signatures. Heat, visibility and electromagnetic emissions. Weapons offline. Shields offline. This way we always have our values in view, which is especially interesting for stealth gameplay. In the left outer area, we find the indicators for the coupled mode, ESP as well as the landing gear. Also redesigned is the visualization of the engine load, which is represented with THR and simple line. The small arrow shows the maximum load without additional boost. If we activate the boost, formerly the afterburner, an interactive boost displays appear, where the number indicates a percentage value. And this is the first of three capacitors, energy stores which can be recharged after being emptied. It should be noted with the engine boost that we can empty it completely, but we can only reactivate it above the red area. And depending on the energy level selected for the engines, this energy storage recharges at different rates, which we will measure later with the comparison of the different energy levels, also in terms of time. The speed indicator and the speed limit have also been visually adapted. Through the colored display in green and red, we see at a glance whether we're still within the recommended SCM speeds. In the dark field, we find the current speed as well on the right side opposite to current flight altitude again. But let's come to the second capacitor, our ship's weapons. And here we have to distinguish if we use energy weapons, like laser repeaters, neutron weapons, distortion variants or other energy weapons, or even ballistic weapons, because the difference for the energy management are considerable. Because our energy weapons, depending on the energy setting of our capacitors, have a limited number of shots, which must be recharged in a pause before we can fire again. Ballistic weapons are not affected by this, which is a decisive advantage for energy management. However, we will deal with our weapon systems in detail in a moment. The last of the three capacitors is used by our shield systems. As usual, the solid green bar indicates the current shield strength as well as a percentage. Our capacitor here is indicated by the small white triangles on the sides of the respective shield. As soon as it becomes active, we see a quickly charging smaller white line on the respective shield. And here the differences are also very clear, depending on how we use our energy management in relation to the shields. Does the recharge significantly faster or slower? Because in addition to the primary effects of the energy distribution, we have additional bonus effects, should we bring the energy distribution in a range above the standard value of 33%. So we get more shots per charge for energy weapons, our shields become harder and more resistant, and thrusters can boost longer due to a bonus on consumption. However, only two of the three possible bonuses are possible. If we give our energy weapons more priority in the energy distribution, we see already with a few percent more that first our distortion repeaters hold one shot more per charge, from 14 to 15. Changing the distribution is possible not only with hotkeys, but also with the interaction mode and the mouse. If we now further increase the energy for our weapon systems, we get more and more shots per charge cycle. 
up to a maximum of 100% energy distribution to the weapons. But beware, if 100% is reached in one area, in our example the shields will no longer charge after hits and our boost will also continue to be empty after consumption. So it will be up to you in which areas you set your focus. If you as a trader are interested in avoiding conflicts, distribution of energy to the shields and drives is usually the best configuration. The differences between the various energy levels are clearly noticeable. In the default configuration our shields charge normally, but have no bonuses to damage reduction or charging speed. This on our test hornet, we wait about 13 seconds for the shields to fully build up. Not a bad value, but the differences become very noticeable should we focus completely on the shields. By the way, the basic energy of the ship, the regular engines, the life support as well as other systems is not affected by the energy triangle. Thus, even at 100% weapon energy, we can continue to give thrust, but without boosts. If we use 100% shield focus, as in this case, they fully charge in just under 5 seconds, more than twice as fast as in the standard. Ballistic weapons are a special feature, as they are not covered by the capacity gameplay, thus allowing energy to be used on shields and drives. This is a clear advantage, but it comes at a high price due to the enormously limited ammunition capacity. Our energy weapons do not charge due to the lack of distribution, while our ballistic cannons are not interested in energy distribution. Therefore, ballistic weapons will probably play a more specialized role in the future for more unusual situations. In order to distribute the energy quickly during a fight, the escape from attackers or even just when taking off from a landing zone without having to take our eyes off the cockpit, it is recommended to use the hotkeys F5 to F8. For example, with the F5 key you can gradually move more and more energy towards the weapon systems, with a press on the F6 key we distribute energy to the boosters and with the F7 key we give more energy to the shield systems. By pressing the F8 key we restore the default values. Saving your own configuration is not possible at the moment, but this suggestion has already been taken up by CAG. But we come to the comparison test of the different energy settings for the area of our boosts. If we empty these completely and notice clear differences in the charging rates. The emptying of the boost is independent of the energy distribution equally fast, but should be in the future also dependent on the energy settings, to enable with higher energy values a slower consumption and thus more usable energy. With 100% energy distribution, bottom right, our boosters are already filled up again in 14 seconds. At 76% top right, it's already 22 seconds, a whole 32 seconds at 50% top left, a quick 20 seconds at 83% and with 50 seconds in the default settings, we wait what feels like an eternity. For the shields area, the time differences are more marginal, but here even a few seconds have a significant impact on survivability and resistance. You can find a test on this as soon as the shields and weapon values have been implemented fully in the game. The new power management systems offers already in the first version a clear extension of the game depth and adaption possibilities to the own playstyle. And now the boosters in the standard have finally made it. In the area of energy weapons, the loading rates are just as significant as the respective bonuses on the shot capacity, as we can directly influence our damage values here. More energy here means not only faster loading rates, but at the same time directly higher shoot output and this increased potential damage. But the power management system is only one of the elements that have a direct influence on space combat, flight behavior and the personal game experience. The new missile operator mode and more extensive improvements of the multi-crew experience also contribute to this, which is why we would like to share you soon the new XXL guide to the missile operator mode and multi-crew capabilities. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave me a like and maybe even a subscribe here. With the changes to the overall flight system, the balancing of weapons and ships, the implementation of the power management system, Star Citizen is shifting away from an arcade experience towards a more comprehensible and believable simulation. I find this part very interesting so far and I look forward to the upcoming changes.
But as always, I'm interested in your opinion on the subject. Do you find the new power management system good? Feel free to write me under the video, in the Discord or in the almost daily Twitch live streams. But the most important as always at the end, the big thank you to our Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. You are a huge motivation. Without you, the whole thing in this form would not be possible. Thank you for your support, guys. You rock. And of course, as every month, there are extensive giveaways. What you can win and how you can participate, you find in the Discord or in the following announcement trailer for July. I say goodbye until next time. See you soon. And say as always, see you in the verse.